Hello, everybody. My name is Juan Carlos Brando. Thank you for joining us today in this show with the attorney Margaret W. Wong, who is an expert in the immigration field. And she has been working on that field for over uh, 40 years. And we're really excited that uh, this year has brought a lot of changes in the immigration uh, world um, since the new president or the new administration came up in the States, um, we have seen a lot of changes, uh, more possibilities of getting a work permit, more possibilities or chances to uh, get uh, a benefit of immigration. People that are DACA beneficiaries are being uh, accepted for new requests. So we have a lot of uh, good news this year uh, the this uh, the disappear of the uh, public charge in some sense is good as well. So um, let's talk to the attorney Margaret W. Wong because she's the one that knows a lot of things that we want to know, and she will explain many things that uh, I know <clears throat> are going to be very very useful for us that are immigrants, just like her. She is an immigrant as well. She came a long time ago and she started from nothing. Maybe just like you and me, that we came here to the United States without money, maybe with just one bag and we made it here. But now that we are here, we need to talk to an expert who can explain to us how to make a living in the United States. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for having me today. And well, Ms. Wong, you have seen a lot in this country. You have been working on this field uh, for several years. And also, we know that you started from nothing. How do we do it here in the United States? You just get up in the morning. I Sometimes I think young people nowadays think too much because they think, oh, my gosh, I need to do this. I need to do this. Look at so-and-so. Look at my father in China. He was so successful. You know, look at the Civil War. So I think a lot of times with the influx of information, sometimes we tend to think too much. My advice to young people or to anybody who wants to survive in America, just to do it, you know, get a job, get your hands dirty. If the boss said eight hours, you work nine hours. I mean, if the boss says something, you do something. Especially today, I've seen so many situations where the the worker had been with the boss for so long, uh, and then nowadays the boss wants to sell the business to the to the person or the people who work with them. It's called ESOP. That means employee owned businesses, or the employee is taking over the boss because they're mostly these rich people. Their children don't want the business. So that's one way to look at it. So I would just keep learning and core competence is so important, you know, because you have to be good at what you do. You couldn't just do something for three months or six months. You don't like it. You switch, you switch. I mean, most of us really don't enjoy too much of what we do, even though, I mean, we do, but we don't. You just have to stick with the program and just do it. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, because this is true. And that's that's what people call overthinking maybe we overthink too much before we act and uh when i see you working miss wong and i remember you you call my attention because i was in a meeting and that meeting was taking too long and you said why do we need a meeting that is very long are we getting somewhere or just talking about the problems and not getting a solution so that's a philosophy that I really like and that uh, can make myself successful. And I learned it from you because uh, um, that's where you can see I can do a lot of things if I think, but act at the same time. So as an, as immigrants, Ms. Wong, um, I know a lot of people that know their problems. They know what they need. They know that they need documents or need a work permit, they need a driver's license, but they haven't done nothing and they have been living in the United States for 12 years, 15 years. Why do they stay like that and what should they do in order to change their situation? 
I think a lot of people like us, we have a natural fear of authorities. Anytime we see, even today, if I go to immigration, I'm still, I remember the fear I have when I get my own green card. I mean, I didn't get my own, I had a lawyer. Um, when I, like even now, if the police stop me, I remember put two hands on a wheel. It's just who we are. We can, most of us came from a country that's tough. So, and I think the normal American people who are born here, um, they really don't, uh, don't, uh, but they, they're talking about defunding the police. I'm like, oh my gosh, they should see how the police in Hong Kong and China and Singapore and Malaysia, they work, you know, you have no voice and you don't say, you, you're just brought up not to say anything. So, um, and that's another problem with uh, American, the difference in culture, because I think most of the people who are born here, including my children, we sort of accept how what America is, the individual freedom. If I don't want to take my vaccination, I'm not going to take it. If I don't want to, if I want to go and uh, revolt against the government, I'll go on January 6th. I mean, it's like, oh my gosh, individual freedom is, it's great. If you also have to worry about the common good of all of us, you couldn't just think everything is me, me, me. The world won't be here if everything is me, me, me. That's that's true, Miss Woman. Thank you so much for this talk. And well, I want to welcome everybody who is joining us today. And um, you can send your questions. Miss Wong is going to be answering for free. So please send your questions. And we will be really happy to answer each and every one of your immigration questions. So, Ms. Wong, the first uh, question that we are getting here from our audience comes through our inbox. Um, we left the United States one year ago, November 13, 2020. We were not deported. We don't have criminal records. We have adverse effects, especially our two kids, since we came here in our country. Please advise of the possible ways to return to the United States. If you have parents or sisters and brothers who are green card or citizen, they can sponsor the parents. That takes only a year, year and a half. You can have an employer sponsor you for green card. If you had only came once and left once and never came back illegally, your parents could give you a 601 pardon to come back. The perm process and job offer process takes only about two and a half to three and a half years. First, you do the perm, then you do the I-140, then you cable approval to the National Visa Center, then you pay the filing fee, you go to American Embassy, you get the visa interview, the visa call, you go to the interview, and then you file the 601 waiver. There's a 10-year bar uh, if there's no fraud. Because if you enter legally or illegally, if you never show a phony passport, that's the way you do it. But a lot of us, people like us, don't have parents, have green card, citizens, don't have uh, don't have children, don't have uh, sisters and brothers, then you will have to stay there for more than 10 years if you have been undocumented in America for more than 360 days. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Uh, for this answer, and don't forget that Miss Wong will be in the city of Columbus, Ohio tomorrow. Tomorrow is November the 19th, uh, so don't forget that she will be attending people, seeing people face to face tomorrow in the uh, Columbus office. So please give us a call 216 279 3984. 216 279 3984, and Miss Wong will be. So happy to receive each and every one of you uh, in the immigration office of Margaret W. Wong. Uh, the next question, Ms. Wong, that we have here in our inbox, um, how much all in all fees, no hidden charges for waivers 212A9 and capital A, I don't know, uh, what the difference is, or if they mean the the legal fee. 
Okay, it could be a, a, a motion or an appeal, could be a 220B maybe. I think that's more than $600. All you have to do is to call the office and ask whoever picked up the phone, how much is the, whatever the form, the fee. We all have a fee schedule in front of our desk. We can tell you right away. So call the office and ask the, the man or woman who answers that phone. We just know it by heart. I don't have it in front of me. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And the phone number, don't forget, is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984 is the phone number that you can call right now to ask uh, Ms. Wong her questions and to also um, to get an information about your immigration case. Uh, this next question, Ms. Wong, um, a person who has been punished with 10 year bar uh, for using fake ID can be forgiven? Uh, okay, it, the two, uh, anytime you use a fake ID is a fraud. If you didn't leave the country, then, and you are applying for green card in America, you still need a 601. So you need a spouse or parents to give you a 601 waiver. That's a fraud waiver. But if you left the country and that's a 10 year bar waiver, uh, but fraud waiver is very different from 10 year bar waiver. 10 year bar, if you're satisfied with more than 10 years, you can come back. Fraud waiver is forever. You always have to uh, file a pardon or waiver, be it you're out of the country or in the country. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Wong, uh, for this answer. So if you need more information, please give us a call, 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Um, this next question uh, uh, is, my asylum case is pending, but I was detained and put on hold. I guess the question is, what's going to happen now? Uh, so... I presume, is he still in jail? Is that the question? Um, I I assume if this person is texting us, must be outside of, of Okay, the so basically country. you could have meant how to get off your ankle bracelet or the, or the um, you know, nowadays they make your report on your cell phone. So as long as you keep reporting, they will take it off one day. As far as your asylum case, if you came to America after May of 2021, they're trying to deport people like us in less than 300 days. I don't know yet how it will work because this new law just came in and we are experiencing it now. They're trying to go back to the old Bush days where they're having hearings very fast. But in those days, they don't have a, a, a lot of people that's coming in, rushing in like now. Um, but the asylum case, really make sure you, you do a good preparation before the final hearing because there's ways to win these cases because asylum case filed within a year, there's always a, about 50-50 chance of winning or maybe a, a 45 to 65 percent chance of winning is an excellent chance if you prepare the job don't just go see a lawyer and say oh i couldn't find this i couldn't find that if you can't prove it it's difficult but if you could prove it that'd be so much easier thank you so much miss one this person is adding that uh he or she was released on a fourteen thousand dollars bond and Good. so uh, if you win it you will get the bond money back. That's why it's always better not to use a bondsman. In criminal cases, you always use a bondsman for 5%, 10%. In immigration, if you win the case or if you one day leave the country or get deported or get a green card, you get all the money back plus interest. Yeah, and this person says that have a court date on February 2, 2022. There are two types of court dates. One is the master calendar, is a pre-trial. One is IH, is the trial. So it depends on if it's a pre-trial or a trial. But if you lose the trial, the IH, you have 30 days to appeal. I always like to advise, advise my clients to file the work permit, six months, the C8 work permit. I presume you already have it. Six months in advance, because then even if you lose the trial, you still have a balance of one, one and a half month. But as long as you keep appealing, your work permit would be good. You can still extend 
180 days prior to the expiration of that work permit. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And uh, well, if you need more information, don't forget that you can call the phone number 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984 is the phone number that you can dial right now to talk to the attorney, Margaret W. Wong. And don't forget that she will be meeting uh, people in person tomorrow in the city of Columbus, Ohio. So please make your appointment today or call to see if she can uh, have any spaces for tomorrow. And the phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Monica Ayala is asking the next question. is in Spanish, but I will uh, translate into English. My husband and I, we have a 10-year cancellation case. Um, and my question is if it affects my case, if my if my children go to Mexico for vacation and come back, I guess the children are born here. Yes, uh, the children are born here. They can always leave and come back. I think the question really means if they go on vacation now, would it affect my case? Since my tenure cancellation case means that I could, because I need to protect the children because they're American born, they're here. The fact that they go on vacation, would that hurt my case? The answer is don't go for too long because, for example, I have children who go back home to study medicine or to go to school, then, of course, uh, it will hurt you. But if it's only a one- or two-week vacation, it would not hurt us. Okay. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, uh, for this answer. So, Monica, uh, la pregunta era eh, si sus hijos pueden viajar de vacaciones a México. Y la abogada nos dice que sí podrían viajar, pero que no sea por un tiempo muy largo, porque le puede afectar su caso. Porque usted está diciendo que ellos no se pueden ir a México para eh, vivir allá porque sufrirían, pero entonces si no pueden irse a México porque sufrirían, ¿cómo es que van ahora mucho tiempo de vacaciones? Entonces eso hay que eh, tenerle mucha atención, prestarle mucha atención. Y ellos pueden viajar en cualquier momento, pero... Eh, porque son ciudadanos americanos, pero eso podría, sí, definitivamente afectarle su caso de inmigración. Muchísimas gracias por su pregunta. Y les recordamos que la abogada Margaret Wong... Oh, uh, I'm going back into English, Ms. Wong. Uh, uh, I want to remind everyone that Ms. Wong has offices in nine cities of the United States. Atlanta, Chicago, Columbus, Cleveland, Memphis, Minneapolis, Nashville, New York, and Raleigh, North Carolina. And the phone number is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984 is the phone number that you can call right now. And Ms. Wong will be happy to answer your immigration questions. Uh, this next question is, I am in Thailand now working for a call center. My CEO uh, lives in the United States, and I would like to know what the difference is or how hard it is to get an L1 visa or H1B or a tourist visa. Uh, is it possible to get or is not possible? It is absolutely possible for each one B. You need a bachelor's degree or more. The job offer has to be ready by February of 2022. Between February and April, you could get into the lottery in the USCIS.gov. You don't really even need a lawyer. Just type in the company name and your name and see if you got in the lottery because there's a 65,000 lottery for bachelor's and 20,000 for master's. For L1, it depends on how big the business is. As long as the joint each job the joint owner owns 100% of the business or more than 51% of the business, and there's a sibling, a corporate, um, you could be the branch office, it could be the sibling relationship, it could be 100% owned by either side, uh, but it has to be at least 51% owned joint ownership, then you can do an L1, depends on salary. There are three types of L1, L1A, L1B, L1C. You're talking about L1C, so intra-company transfer of a, of an executive, 
L1A is more like the athletes, the scientists, the cancer researchers. L1B is more the permanent uh, researchers and also um, tenure track professors. So you probably are talking about L1C. So make sure if you want to do an L1C, you come to America as executive and managerial. So it depends on the business. Hey, thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for this answer. And well, don't forget that you can call the phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. This person says, I am from Venezuela. I currently live in Canada and I've been here for five years. Now I have my residence here in Canada, but I would like to know if I can go visit the United States and what the process would be with my residence card in Canada. Do I need a visa to go to the United States? Thank you. If you are only a landed immigrant in Canada, you need a tourist visa. That law changed only about 15, 20 years ago. Before, once you land in Canada, you don't need a tourist visa. Now you do. So the question is not clear. Are you a landed or are you a Canadian citizen? Canadian citizen, you don't need a visa. Landed, you do. Canadian citizen can do an e-visa. Landed, you cannot. So... Um, in, uh, in Canada, to become a citizen, you need only three years. So hurry up, become a citizen. And now you can do a free trade visa. You can do an e-visa to come to America. Thank you, Ms. Wong, uh, for this uh, answer. And people are sending a lot of questions right now. So um, we're a little behind uh, sending the questions. But thank you so much for uh, sending your questions, for trusting Ms. Wong to answer each and every one of your immigration needs. And if you need more information, please don't forget to call this phone number. It's 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. This uh, next question says, um, Ms. Wong, uh, I am a Jehovah Witness, but in my town, uh, people don't like us. They are believers of other religions, especially, uh, I don't know if I can say the other religion here, Ms. Wong, uh, but the majority of the people are Muslims. And in my neighborhood, and some of them have told me things that I really don't like. Um, I think I will have to move, but uh, can I apply for something? Because one of the persons was really aggressive against me, my wife, and my kids, saying that people of my religion could not live around them, and they are technically kicking me out of the neighborhood. Is there something that I can do? And this person adds that last year when he put... Uh, some uh, furniture outside of the house uh, related to his religion, somebody came and cut the cables and the cords, and uh, it, it was a big issue. Actually, that's interesting because these are questions we get every day. It seems like you're still in the old country. Anytime you're in the old country, you cannot file for asylum. And in the olden days, we have refugee centers. Like as I said earlier, the Vietnamese, we are all going to Thailand and different places have their refugee centers. So we wait there for years and then... You know, nowadays, there's, there's very, very few, if any, centers now. Um, that's why when Afghanistan fell, you know, all the people were trying to rush to the airport. So in your case, it seemed like you're still there. That's why a lot of southern border people come up and surrender at the, at the gate or at the line. So you are asking... The real question is, I'm suffering from uh, asylum issues because of inability of my home country to protect me and because of religion. So how could I apply for asylum in America? You could not apply for asylum in America. I mean, you could, but they won't grant it. You can always run to the American embassy and request it, but they won't grant it. So you're stuck. So uh, you cannot apply for asylum or, uh, unless there's a camp or somewhere. Um, but if you come to America, if you enter America legally, 
then you can apply for asylum or illegally. And this person says, Ms. Wong, that uh, do I need a police report from my country uh, to indicate that this is happening? It doesn't hurt a police report, but we need to be careful because right now all the borders are so tight now and you don't want to get like it's so beautiful police report because they know we're prepared because normally when we are scared, we don't prepare for like if I have a big wedding, I have to prepare for it, but I have a very impromptu small wedding. I don't need to prepare for it, you know? So there's a balance between prepare for asylum at the border because that's not something America likes. America always feel if you come to America as a tourist, your purpose is tourist. If you come to America as a H-1B worker or TN visa, then you need to go to a job or something like that. So, um, so you balance between the need to really get things ready or the need to just convince them at the border what to do. Yes, this person is saying that is from Bangladesh. Sorry. This person mentioned that is from Bangladesh. Oh, Bangladesh. The person that uh, that is being okay, yeah. kind Sorry of Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And uh, well, we have one more question coming in through our uh, Facebook. Um, if if you need to ask more questions to the attorney Margaret Wong, or you uh, have the need of a consultation, please feel free to uh, talk to her, to get in touch with her, and she will be so happy to answer your immigration needs. So uh, for today, our time is up. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for having us today. And uh, please don't forget that you can call. The, the consultation is just one call away from you. And the phone number is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984 is the phone number of the attorney, Margaret W. Wong and associates uh, she is not the only uh, attorney in the law firm we have several attorneys in the law firm that speak several languages and well uh for today then we are dismissing this show but tomorrow uh we will have more information uh, miss Wong will be in the city of columbus ohio and next week we're going to have her on wednesday since Thursday is uh, Thanksgiving. So thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Wong, for having us today. Uh, thank you to uh, our team and see you next time. Thank you and take care.